I would like to introduce you to Dr. Quantum. He is going to teach us all about the double slit experiment and how special you are. So special, in fact, you don't even, you can't even understand how special you are. And he, he's going to tell you all about it. But first, we got to tear down, like, the institutions that are telling you that you're not special. Now, let's, let's get to that. What they taught us in school isn't really the way it is. And that our senses are playing tricks on us. You just got to wonder. Hmm. You can't trust what you've been taught. You can't trust what you're sensing. This doesn't seem like, uh, you know, setting people up for indoctrination. Not at all. What is this reality that we find ourselves in? Quantum physics says it's all just waves of information. No, actually, it doesn't. It, no. They just deal with the information because their job is the mechanics of it. It's not like quantum philosophy. <laughs> Not that I don't think that's where they endeavor. In fact, I think it is. It's just not what they do. Do I believe that? <laughs> I hope so. Because what, what kind of person just accepts what they can sense and what they've been told? And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness. The infamous double slit experiment. You, you know, when you declare something is infamous, like, you're kind of implying everybody already knows about it. You'd have to give the context of where it was infamous, and it really wasn't anywhere. And also, super classy. Put your, uh, your movie poster in the background, the periodic table. You know, little... <laughs> oh, okay, we've got to keep going. But this is an awesome experiment, and they do a really, really good job up until a point. But it's just so comical. I'll, I'll let him go. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter... Yeah, see, already starting to set things up here, little balls of matter. It are, it's it's summoning an image of a BB, of a, little, of a little, like, metal BB. And that's not how... the Okay, I've, I've recently read, uh, or listened to anyway... But we need a new, new word that covers listening and reading. We've got to stop making that distinction. But uh, Sean Carroll's new book. Excellent book. Really enjoyed it. Mostly for narcissistic reasons. In that I had this idea of how things were, but like I know enough not to trust my memory. And when I was going through the book, it was basically like, oh, cool, I wasn't full of shit about that. Uh, that that happened a lot of times and made me very happy. So this this thing annoyed me for a long time, and it annoyed him. Annoyed him so much to put it in the book, and <laughs> and and they talked about it on Joe Rogan. Like this is the one, and I'm going to do my best here. Act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. All good so far. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Exactly. Now, Nothing wrong here. Look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen. It is amazing the parts they get right. They get they they actually do a really good job with. To the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, I'm not sure anybody's done as good a job of visualizing so this effect. There is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines. He's right on here. Cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this. He's, he's, still, he's, still pushing, he's still pushing this dichotomy of matter, little balls of matter, things. Little balls of matter, things. Then we're going to have this other realm of ideas and potential. 
and that that is the realm of the mind. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one... No, not a tiny marble. Not... No. They're trying to set it up that it comes out, and it's one thing, and then before it approaches the slit, it gets weird, goes through the slit, gets weird again, and then, like, you know, hits the wall. And no, when you're generating these things, they're essentially unentangled. So they're not anything yet. And when they're forced to be something, this is where, you know, the many worlds comes in. Slipped. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get... Like the marbles, two bands. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No way! It's an interference pattern! How is this even possible? I'm trying to go over the top, but I'm still under him somehow. You're seeing... Basically, like, instead of it being little balls going through, it's just these, like, this cloud of potential locations. And it doesn't pick one until it has to. And when it does, that's uh, not necessarily a, a, a splitting of the worlds, depending on, your, on how they're measuring it and stuff. An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. Yeah, because they're not little marbles. Yeah, and there's another weird little distinction that he's making here for tactical reasons. Is and I, you know, that was this is one of the things that really uh, John Carroll's book actually helped me get past this little wrong way of thinking that I had. That although it's true that matter, whatever, behaves differently at the quantum level, that is true. But most of the stuff that they're talking about that's happening at that size is when you're dealing with an unentangled particle becoming entangled. It's not just about that size. And that's, that's something they need to build on for, you know, other reasons. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought. Maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So, they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself. No. 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 Back, back the truck up. It doesn't have a position before it becomes entangled. Let's, let's say you had three slits, just to make it, it, conceptually it might be easier. And you made it so it had an equal opportunity of going through all three slits. Not sure how you'd figure that out. Something like that could happen. It wouldn't have to be slits. And the probability is straight up, one-third each. And you can do the experiment over and over again, one-third one each, one-third each. The re it's not random at all, that's the thing. It's not just randomly choosing a location. When that occurs, the universe, you know, the world branches. This is many worlds. When that happens, all three possibilities occur each time. Say that again. All of the possible outcomes do occur. However, you know, humans, consciousness, we can only exist in one universe at a time, so we only ever get to see one of those outcomes. There's two other people in other universes wondering why 
it seems random also. And they're almost, at the point, they're, you're almost identical to them, but I suppose you'd you know, diverge over time. Or you probably wouldn't much, who knows. But uh, yeah, there's two copies of you that got the other two results every time you do the experiment. But this is, this is not a mystery to quantum physicists. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a nope. wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. No, it means the ones that didn't get stuck on the outside here still were acting as waves because they hadn't become entangled with anything yet and still showed the interference pattern. Until they actually become entangled with something, they don't behave like a particle. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. Physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through. I think it's very telling they make an eyeball out of it because the narrative has to be that it's somehow human perception causing the wave function to collapse and not the object becoming entangled and splitting the wave, you know, split, or branching the wave function into multiple worlds and let it fly <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined when they observed the electron went back to behaving like a little marble it produced a pattern of two bands no because it became entangled without actually impacting something but as soon as it became entangled it started acting like you know, a physical object. A little ball of matter as soon as it needed to. Not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring yep. or observing becoming entangled with, yes. Slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently. No, it was, it was still doing the same thing since, 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 it, was, since it was generated. It was aware it was being watched. No, 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 I don't think... Okay, let's say electrons were self-aware. Let's just give that one up. Anything traveling at the speed of light cannot perceive the passage of time. You are frozen. And electrons might not quite be there, but they'd be so damn close it just wouldn't even matter. Like, you know, a second would be like millennia, you know, something like that. But it's got to be humans. Got to be humans. And this was like a supplement. They like, they made the movie and then they made like another one, but it wasn't like a sequel because it contained a lot of the original material, but then it contained some new stuff like this. And it just kind of looked like a recut. Like they kind of like, there's gold on this editing room floor. Let's. <laughs> was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer... I'm, I'm going to say that, that, that these are actually important questions. But there it just isn't much interest in them right now, which is basically... I'm going to keep coming back to Sean Carroll, but that, that's like his major criticism. It's like, we do need to look into these things. These are important questions. But it's not like the authorities have made their judgment on this and now they're moving on with other stuff. They're like, no, we're not really concerned with that. That's, that's not our thing. Our job is, literally, we're the mechanics, you know? <laughs> we're not the philosophers. ...have to do with any of this. The observer collapsed the wave function simply i like how he's like saying the observer he, we're looking at what should be a camera 
but it's a sort of mechanical eye with creepy metal eyelash. This looks like something out of like a, a heavy metal video from the 80s. By observing. But that's that's the whole shtick. It's about observing. Like like we're doing it. So close to right. That's why it's it's kind of dangerous. Like it, it kind of it annoys me because it kind of sent me down the wrong path. It was like it was like I was learned archery the wrong way and now it's like I gotta back up and retrain. It's a freaking pain in the ass. Well that's it. Thank you all. I am the expert layman. Goodbye.